bribing the puppy with dog-friendly peanut butter in a ring. You should see this, hang on. A little face. He's like, give me my treat. Okay. Do you reckon we can film this before he finishes his treat? I don't know. Let's go. Hi. Uh, we're in France, which is kind of fun. And I'm going to show you some of the cool things that we've seen this week. We've been to Mentom. We've done the Lemon Festival. We've been to Monaco. And we're now in Lyon. We're doing sort of a random circuit. We've done Italy as well, but I'm going to save that for another day. But before I show you some of the places we've been to, I thought I would answer a couple of your questions about what you need to bring with you when you're taking a motorhome to France. So I'm just going to run through a list of all the stuff that you need. So if you are planning your own trip to France, and I totally recommend it, then you will be prepared. So let's start with the boring bit. Let's start with paperwork. You need, obviously you need your passport. You need your driving license. Now you only need your pink bit of the driving license. You don't need the green bit if you've got a green bit. Um, you do need, oh God, okay. I'm filming this in the middle of March. In fact, on the day that we're filming that, they're doing all these votes about Brexit and what the heck's gonna happen. So at the moment, you don't need an international driving permit. On the 29th of March, who knows? We've got ours, did you know there are three different types? There are three different types based on the countries in Europe that you want to visit. In France, it's the 40s one, the middle one, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, okay, I should probably have checked that beforehand. I'll put a link below to the IDP that you actually need. Because you only need one if you're going to France. If you're going to Spain, you need a different one. And that totally caught us out. There is a 48 and a 66, or a 68 and a 40. There are lots of different years of something from there. And then there's a 1922 one, which you only need if you're going to go to Liechtenstein or Mexico. Who knew? So, yeah, there are three different types. So be careful which one you get at the post office. They're like, what countries do you want to go to? And we were like, all of them? So, yeah, we've got three. And they only cost a fiver each. Um, and all you need is a photo of yourself and you get it there and then take about 10 minutes in the post office. So, yeah, get them, maybe. Unless you're watching this in April and Brexit has been postponed for like 17 million years, in which case, don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll move on from politics completely. Okay, what other things do you need? In fact, green cards is covered in that as well. So you either need a green card or you don't, depending on when you're watching this and what's happened with Brexit. But again, let's, let's move on from that. Um, you need, obviously, you need vehicle insurance covering Europe. You need breakdown insurance covering Europe. You need uh, health and travel insurance for yourself covering Europe. The E111 card's always good. Uh, but we have extra travel insurance just in case because getting repatriated back to the UK if you've got a broken leg or something costs a fortune. So yeah, try and get some basic cover for that. You need, oh, you need your logbook, your V5C. If you don't own the vehicle and you're hiring it, A, obviously check to make sure that it's okay to take it to France before you hire it. But you then also need a letter or certificate from them saying that it's okay to take the vehicle out of the UK and into the EU. Um, again, who knows whether we are or are not part of the EU at the moment, but you know, you definitely need some form of letter proving that it's okay for you to take that. I need to stop bouncing actually, because if I do this, the camera moves. So let's just not do that. What else do you need? You need pet paperwork. Oh God. At the moment, you just need a pet passport. Um, yeah, you might need a blood test. If you need a blood test and that all goes through, then you need to wait three months from the date that the blood was drawn to the date that you can leave the UK. Now this taught us completely by surprise. We thought it was three months coming back to the UK, but it's not. So at the moment, we're due to come back and leave um, the week after Brexit, really bad planning, really bad planning. And poor Mac isn't allowed, he can come back, but he's not allowed to leave the UK again because he didn't have his blood drawn for the second time until middle of January so technically he can't leave till the middle of April oh, so he's staying in France with friends anyway so that is all of the paperwork off the top of my head I've got a list here actually let me make sure that's everything yeah it's all the paperwork that you need um stuff that you need to bring so you need um a warning triangle you need a GB sticker you need a high-vis jacket for every single one of you and that has to be reached from within the vehicle so if you're in a car don't put it in your boot and if you are in a motorhome put it wherever you like as long as it's not like an outside locker quick tip don't leave them on the dashboards or like on the back of your chairs 
on the dashboard seems to be becoming a sign that you're a member of the Gilets Jean, um, and that's not necessarily something you want to be associated with. So I wouldn't put them on display at the moment. Now I know lots of workmen and stuff do that anyway, and I'm not in any way suggesting that everyone who has their high vis jacket on display is a member of the Gilets Jean, but they do seem to be like displaying them really prominently in their vehicles as they're driving around. Um, we've noticed that quite a lot in France. Talking of them, we haven't encountered any outward aggression, but they are very determined that if they're blocking that route, and they tend to be on roundabouts a lot, and they have these like big sticks, for want of a better word, with string and tennis balls dangling them for third, that you'll hit your vehicle. They're not going to damage your vehicle, but they're enough to make you sort of, what the heck is that? We've stopped once, and we stopped for about 10-15 minutes until they realised that it was utterly pointless and we were like the only vehicle there and they were like oh just just go <laughs> just just get out of our sight um we know of people who've been stopped for a couple of hours and that's at much bigger blockades I wouldn't suggest in any way shape or form antagonizing them sadly now at this point in March it's sort of morphed from what was ever their initial statement to a lot of people who just want to cause as much havoc as they can um, and again that's probably a horrendously sweeping generalization and I apologize for those who do have a point that they want to prove but it just tends to be a lot of troublemakers and the troublemakers are generally up for a fight so if you do encounter them I would just stop or if they're on a roundabout we've done this several times and they're blocking two or three of the exits go about the way you've come there'll always be another way try and avoid them as much as you possibly can but they pop up in the most random places and they're generally like 20 30 or more of them at a time so yeah i wouldn't suggest engaging if you can possibly help it uh, we tend to find that if we're in our motorhome and we parked basically blocked the entire roundabout because we were coming off a slip road and they were right there and they blocked the exit so we just blocked the roundabout and just stopped and that was when they were like, oh, <laughs> this isn't going to go well. So just let us go through. But whether we were lucky or not, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Other things you need to bring. You need to bring a breathalyzer. Um, we tend to carry two. There was this whole debacle about whether or not they were going to fine you if you didn't have one. And they have cancelled the fines now. Apparently they're not in force at the moment. But just carry one. They're only a few quid. And also, do you know they only last like a year or maybe two years if you're really lucky and then they expire. So check the date on them because if they're expired, obviously that's not going to be any good either. You also need, what have we said so far? Oh, headlight converters. Yeah, the little sticker things that you stick on. They are easy to put on wrong. So definitely follow the instructions. Um, and that's probably going to be the thing that you're pulled over for most because it's so obvious at night if your headlights are pointing the wrong direction so yeah make sure you've fitted them right a lot of them now have got fairly easy to follow instructions she says knowing how easy it is to get it wrong uh, I think we went through two packs when we fitted ours so yeah make sure that they are fitted correctly there's no way of knowing there's no like yay you've done it right when you fitted them you just kind of hope that they're on right but hope that they're on right um what else do you need what have I got here oh first aid kit you definitely need a first aid kit but there's no set Thing on what you have to carry in your first aid kit you just have to have one there's all sorts of strange rules and regulations but make sure you've got one with you if you want a list of what we have in our first aid kits on the website I'll stick the link below and you can just copy that really but it's basically just one of these first aid kits that we got from Amazon I think or Boots or somewhere um, and the other thing we carry is snow chains now obviously that's not specific to France none of this is really specific to France to be fair but we have snow chains, we've never had to use them. We went through the Alps the other day. I'll be fitted on that in a different video. Um, it was beautiful, but luckily all the snow had gone, so we didn't actually have to wear snow chains at all. So you have to have them, you have to know how to fit them. I'm sure we know how to fit them. Honest, yeah, definitely. Um, so you have to know how to fit them, but we've never actually had to. And if you are planning on going up mountains, I always recommend getting big, solid, all weather tires. Um, specifically for motorhomes because yeah the roads can get really quite scary and all a bit chaotic so that is the main sort of have to haves and have to carries and stuff when you go to France we also have a toll pass and we have our toll pass with the company whose name now escaped me because they changed it what the heck is their new name oh I can't remember I'm gonna link to that beneath as well or stick a thing up in here when I remember it um, so yeah that's brilliant in fact I'll put a little clip here 
of us going through a toll so you can see how easy it is with a toll pass you literally pull up one with a big t on it and you pull in and it goes beep and the thing opens and you go through and i'm hoping there's some sort of footage here <laughs> that explains all that rather than me just sitting in my van talking it through with you pointing out the toll pass i don't think i've ever actually filmed us going through a toll If you don't have a toll bars, it's dead easy, pull in, um, you either will get a ticket, if there's a big button press it and you'll get a ticket, keep that ticket safe because at the next toll you'll have to put that ticket in and pay. You can pay with cash, euros, if you don't know France is all on euros. Um, if you're going to pay at the tolls, often they are a few euros each, so if you can get change before you travel, not always easy, I know, but you can use that for the tolls definitely, or you can use your credit card and you literally just put your card in normally in the same slot this really confused me but you normally put your card in the same slot where you just put the ticket and if it's for less than not a lot i think you won't have to put your pin in they just do it i think it's 20 maybe 30 euros is you just put your card in and it takes the money out so you don't need to put your pin in a lot of them every now and then you get a manned one and we had real trouble with this in to be fair this was italy and not france but we we were class two Occasionally we came up in Italy as a class three. I don't know what the difference between that is. If you're above three meters on tolls, you're generally a class four, which is a commercial truck. So we're normally a class two, but in Italy they were calling us up and saying we were class four because we had our motor motorbikes on the trailer on the back. And we're like, well, how does that affect us? So maybe it was length or maybe it was the fact that it was extra vehicles or, but yeah, one woman was like, no, you have to pay this. I mean, fine, it was only about three euros extra. It wasn't a massive thing. And then at the next toll, the guy was like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> we'll pay whatever you want. Just pay whatever you want. So that's what we did. Um, what else can I tell you about France? We've done tolls, we've done euros. Um, oh, if you don't know, they're an hour ahead. The whole of the country is an hour ahead. So yeah, add one hour to whatever we are in the UK. What else have I got? Oh, French campsites. Okay, motorhome campsites in France. Now. Campsites in France are pretty much exactly the same as the campsites in the UK except that in my opinion and admittedly I haven't said many of them but in the few that we've been to the toilet and bathroom facilities are nowhere near what you would expect in a decent UK campsite. Not even close. Um, in fact here you go some footage. Campsite is a toilet block. Got outside sinks. And toilet. I don't know if these are male or female. Well, they might just be unisex, to be fair. More sinks. There we go. That's the kind of thing you're looking at. I'll use our van, thanks. So, yeah, no. I, I wouldn't use them personally. Now, I'm sure there are some that are lovely, and I know some of the bigger ones were like swimming pools and kids' facilities and stuff. They're much more catering to the general discerning traveling public. Um, we tend to stay on the cheaper ones that we can find, and that's possibly where we're going wrong with the facilities. So we just use the ones on the motor home. It's fine. Um, all campsites, they will generally open around nine, sometimes a little earlier. They'll shut between 12 and two for lunch. If you arrive between 12 and two, there won't be anybody there. So normally they expect you to check out by 12 and arrivals normally from like three o'clock onwards. Um, expect them to take your passport. This really confused me the first time. They will all want to see your passport. Some of them will just take a photocopy of it, but a lot of them will literally hold on to your passport. Now you only need one passport per motorhome, so just one of you. But they, uh, they like kept it for the two nights that we were there. I was like, that's my passport, I want it. Um, but no, they, they took it and they put a little note on whose you were and everything and they gave it you back when you check out, which is why you need to check out while they're still open, otherwise you'll be sitting there for hours waiting for them to come back. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's about it. 
what else has caught us out? Oh, tips. Tips are generally included. So check it if you go out to eat out at a restaurant or anything, it's generally included. Um, if you're at a cafe or a coffee shop or something, they're often not. So if you want to tip them or put it in the little pot, whatever, that's up to you. Um, I think that's about it. We don't tend to stay on campsites very much in France, as you can tell. We tend to wild camp a lot. Um, in fact, here we go. I'll put some pictures here of our wild camping in France and some of the amazing places we've stayed at. So, okay, that's a brief intro to France and how to bring your motorhome to France or camper van, I guess. I am not a discriminatory channel. Everybody is welcome here. Any form of wheels you can have, come to France. Um, and yeah, let's go and have a look at our adventures at a lemon festival, which was odd. Monaco, which was amazing. We got to ride our bikes on the F1 track. Although annoyingly, we forgot our GoPros that go on the bikes. So we've got our handheld GoPro, but that doesn't have a bike mount. And we've got the bike mount, but we didn't bring the actual GoPro that goes on the bike. So I have no footage of me riding my motorbike on the F1 track. I was like, ah, oh, so frustrating, so frustrating. Because from there we went down to Italy and I will save that for a future video. Otherwise this one will be like seven hours long. It is enormous. But and he's parked in a bad bit. He's turned around. Like it's enormous. <laughs> a bit windswept, but it's pretty cool. There's a view down the valley. Whole area is 
favourite place. You've got mountains, sea and sky. I know everywhere's got sky. You know what I mean. Big sky. Who could have sky? Who could have sky? Yeah, puppy. Hello. Hello, baby. Hi. You having fun? Menton. They're like actual lemon in the trees. On, and we were on our bikes, we're having a grand old time, and then we saw the sign. And this happened. We're in Monaco. You want us like a 360?
cool, it's gorgeous, and it's warm. There's so much money here, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, no, we're gonna go and buy a touristy thing. Max enjoying himself. Hello, say hi. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, we're gonna go explore Monaco. Walking across the Monaco race circuit. Just, just, just. Yeah. Vroom! He's doing the, uh... Probably going vroom! I'd like to ride on the Monaco Grand Prix circuit anyway. What, Monaco? Wow! That's the palace, have not it? Oh, puppy dog. Turn around. What is the water? Oh, sweet town. So last night, Mac and I were chased by an enormous dog. He was absolutely huge. And he was over there. It was about three o'clock in the morning. It was pitch black. It was gorgeous, but the stars were up. And we were wandering around here and Mac was doing his thing because he needed a wee, my fault. And he was like that. And we were about, oh no. We were about here. And then this shape appeared from over there, barking and snapping and growling and running towards us like a demon. And um, yeah, I, I ran quite swiftly back into our motorhome. And so did he. And, and Mr. Wandering Bird was fast asleep. I screamed because I'm a girl and I have a big black shape approaching me. And um, yeah, it was a bit scary. And poor little Mac didn't actually get to leave the Savannah until some crazy time this morning. So we were on a French campsite. And this is quite expensive. It cost us well, 28 pounds. So it's like 28 euros a night. Okay, there's the property. Um, which isn't bad, I guess, for a campsite more than what we normally pay but we wanted somewhere safe to leave it so we could go to Minton and Monaco and uh, there isn't anywhere in Monaco at all they obviously don't hold with such riffraff as motorhomes or caravanners and Menton had like two um, but everyone said that you couldn't get an actual normal size motorhome down to it only a little van or camper or something like that so yeah we were stuck with options there was a really nice one just over the border in Italy which apparently is really close to Menton and easy to get to but they were full so yeah, we were in here just north and east. It's all right, I wouldn't come back, but it's all right, does the job for what we want. So we're off today. We've got to go find him a muzzle because we're going to take him on a train in Italy. We've got to go find him a new dog bed because he's trashed his. And we've got to, have something else we have to do. Oh, we need to go shopping, food. So yeah, that's our plan. And then we're going to Italy. So there we go. What I'm excited about is I've been doing this, but the puppy's still eating. Hi. He's still eating his little, his little thing. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button below somewhere and the little bell if you want to hear when I've got a new video out. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much. And I will see you very soon. If you're on the road, safe travels. If you're not, have fun planning. Bye.